Welcome to our Wednesday devotions at Amelia Plantation Chapel. My friends, let us, let us pray. Oh God, this day, we as a nation are probably still waiting for results from the presidential election, from the election of many important offices in, in the nation. But God, we... We come to you today as Christians, hopeful. We pray that we might be obedient, that we might discern the leading of the Holy Spirit, and that we might be good citizens. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our church, our chapel, and our own lives and our friends. So be with us this day, and let us sense your presence and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and then from verses 13 through 20. Let us hear God's word this day. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear any grain. Some other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And now I'm going to go to verses 13 through 20, where Jesus explains this parable to his disciples. Once again, let us hear God's word. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come and choke out the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Two American ministers preparing for a vacation to Germany studied the German language for over two, even three months. They thought they had a, a real working knowledge of the language until their first Sunday in Germany. As they sat in worship near the front of the sanctuary, they were desperately trying to follow what was going on. And a man sitting right in front of them stood up suddenly. Immediately, they also rose to their feet, only to be met by roars of laughter from the congregation. Apparently, the pastor of the church, about to baptize an infant, had just asked for the father of the child to stand. <laughs> Obviously, they had failed in totally mastering the language. Today, I'd like us to reflect on failure and success from a Christian standpoint. Because today, many people in our, in our nation will consider the election of the president-elect, whoever that is, either a roaring success or a dismal failure for America. But win or lose, on this day, we may be tempted to, to ask, is God really in our political process as a nation? And I want to tell you today, absolutely, He is. E. Stanley Jones was a great American Christian. When he died in 1973 at the age of 89, he had completed 66 years as a Methodist missionary in India. I believe the most intriguing efforts of his internationally known and respected ministry were his futile attempts to head off Pearl Harbor. From August to December 1941, this great churchman worked to persuade President Roosevelt to cable Japan's emperor with a plan for peace. This ill-fated cable, however, actually reached the emperor on December 8th. It's hard to imagine what would have happened if this cable had reached the emperor by December 7th. The whole course of, of history might have been altered from the way that we know it. The lives of millions of, of people might have been spared. We'll never know. Dr. Jones, in his autobiography, wrote about this great disappointment, and he reflected upon it theologically. He called the whole episode an adventure in failure. This is what he wrote. It is not ours to succeed or fail. It is our responsibility to do the highest we know how and leave the results with God. My friends, only a person of mature faith can truly know that sometimes God works through what we perceive as human failure. For only God is the ultimate judge of what will be. Our only hope then, win or lose, is to throw ourselves, our nation, and even our world at the feet of Jesus for His mercy. Jesus told uh, a story about failure. He reminded people of how farmers went about their annual chore of planting. In those days, planters sometimes scattered the seed by hand because it was the quickest way, it was the most convenient way that it could be done. This meant, however, that some of the seed that was scattered would be lost. Jesus wasn't telling the listeners something they didn't already know. He was trying to express a deeper truth. This is what a parable is all about. Looking for a deeper a meaning that, that points to a divine truth. Why did... Jesus shared this parable. Well, one reason is that Jesus had begun to encounter resistance. 
a great deal of resistance in his ministry. The Lord himself couldn't get through to all the people, for many of them had grown into creatures who only trusted their own instincts. I think in the parable of the sower, Jesus wanted his followers to know that in their work for him, in, in seeking God's kingdom, they must learn to accept failure as well as success. Maybe it wouldn't be so hard on us if we could remember that Jesus himself wasn't immune from failure. Jesus knew what it meant to be rejected and denied, even by his own disciples. And so when Jesus shared this parable of the sower, it was probably drawing from a, a very personal understanding of success and failure. Indeed, Jesus shared this parable of the sower, I believe drawing from his own experiences of failure in life. My friends, how important it is then that we hear this word of God today. For Christianity makes any uh, claims about winning, about being a success. In fact, the Gospels often portray Jesus as a worldly failure than a success. The Lord continually acted in pursuance of the truth rather than in what was expected as practical. He was a, a servant when he could have been a master. He could have even been a king simply by his own choosing. Christianity doesn't accept the lie that we all, in life personally, know, know better. We know better. The kind of idea that promotes thoughts like, God, our, our leaders, be they Republican or Democrat or Independent, they don't know what they're doing. But if I were in charge, things would be better. I don't think Jesus worried about practicality because he was more concerned about completing the tasks to which God had called him. The whole march of his church throughout the ages has confirmed that only where people work their faith does their faith produce what pleases God. Not them personally, but their faith in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. My friends, can't we see that it's only in surrendering ourselves, our own efforts and our own uh, desires that we can ever rise to success and fulfillment in Christ. Christ is the key. Christ is not only the, the message of Christianity, He is the answer. Christ is the answer for all that we long for in our nation and in our own lives. If you're searching for anything else in, in this life, then you will never know the, the peace of success or the peace of failure as you or the world might understand it. Indeed, let us come to grips today with how much we can, we can grow through surrender, knowing that Jesus is our success. We must believe in Him and His will, His plan for our own lives and even for our nation. In Jesus' name, Amen.
God, we, we hear your word this day. And we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we might let it grow in our very soul, in our spirit, in our understanding of your desire for us and for our nation, and indeed for the whole world. God, we pray this day for our nation especially. And we pray that we will always know your true desires and that you will send faithful leaders who will lead your people as you have so blessed us as a nation over all these generations and years. Be with us now and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, as we go through the rest of this day, through the rest of this week, let us remember that God is with us. Let us pray that God will richly bless our nation as he has, as I prayed, all these many years. May we be faithful to him, to his word, and to the leading of his Holy Spirit. And as we go, may the grace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be among each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen.